Dear Christian friends, welcome to this presentation and prayer on living in the last days. I'm Elder Dr. Prosper Doe from Healing Christian Center, the prayer ministry in the United Kingdom. We thank the contribution of our brother Paul Mensah, which is acknowledged with gratitude of the Healing Christian Center. United Kingdom. Life in the Holy Spirit or perilous living, choose. Based on 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 and the key verses are 1 verses 1 to 5 and 13 to 14. We are in perilous times. The scripture we read details things that pertain to the last days and which we as believers should know. In verse 1, we read that perilous times will come. This is referring to something definite that it, it will happen. Deceiving and being deceived. Apostle Paul, writing to his young protege, Pastor Timothy, spoke forth what is to come. That is, prophecy and prophecy foretells what is to come. Thus, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, he declares perilous times will come because of the prevalence of perilous men, evil men, and imposters. In fact, they will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Lovers of themselves and lovers of money. But who are these men? Verse 2, verses 2 to 5 reveals, they are lovers of themselves and lovers of money. They are boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Perilous times indeed. It looks obvious to me with people of such composition there is bound to be perilous times indeed. Evil men and imposters will grow. The question is, are these things mentioned here something that prevails in our time? I believe the answer is a definite yes, and on the increase even more as the days go by. Let's read verse 13 again. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Jesus reigns and is Lord of all. Brethren, there is so much affront and ridicule to godly living that as believers of Christ, we are sometimes made to feel hopeless and discouraged, even tempted to compromise our values. But there is hope. Jesus reigns and is Lord of all. Let's read verse 5 again. Having a form of godliness but denying the power. Stay away from people like that. Perilous men parade themselves in some form of godliness, but in reality do not embrace his power. That tells me straight away there is power in godliness, but these men just put up a performance in godliness which lacks in power to change, transform, or speak to any person. They appear godly, but are not all godly. Hence, we are instructed as we continue reading through these verses, stay away from people like that. Continue in the things which you have learned. Not only that, we are also exalted in verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Living in the last days. Living in the last days, perilous men, evil men, and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. However, as a child of God and a man or woman of God, for that matter, we must continue in the things which we have learned and been assured of because we know from whom we have learned them, that is, from people who know the truth 
whose minds are not corrupt and who are approved concerning the faith. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You and I have a choice to make in this matter. It is not a hopeless situation at all. Moreover, the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Therefore, we do not want to just have an appearance of godliness, but be a godly people in actuality, for it carries with it a great gain, a blessing. Depart from iniquity. What more? We may be able to deceive men by our appearance, but we cannot deceive God. Everything is bare and naked before him to whom we should give account. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Holy Spirit as a seal of guarantee. Brethren, the scripture speaks here of a seal. God has sealed the foundation on which we stand upon as believers in Christ. And we also know from scriptures again, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14, that everyone that belongs to Jesus in truth has the Holy Spirit and has him as a seal of guarantee until the final redemption. This means if we belong to Jesus, we have his spirit within us, which testify and confirms that we are truly his. Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper, the enabler, the one who empowers to live godly lives. Brethren, there is power in godly living and the Holy Spirit is the one who enables for we belong to a kingdom, the kingdom of God. And this is what the scriptures has to say about the, this kingdom in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Therefore, beloved, we have a choice to live in the Holy Spirit a godly life to please the one who loved us, saved us, called us, anointed us, and sent us, or live outside the Holy Spirit, putting on an appearance, living for the one who opposes the way of God, that is Satan. God still reigns. To recap, beloved, we have established that we are living in the last days and that perilous times are with us, with perilous men. Yet, within the same time frame, scripture speaks of something even more profound, powerful and revelatory that goes to prove that God still reigns in the affairs of men. And indeed, he has the final say. Hallelujah. Pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Acts chapter 2 verses 17 to 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Remember God's word of promise. Awesome. Isn't that amazing? In these same last days of perilous times, God is also pouring out his spirit generously 
on all flesh. So, before we slip into the status quo, let us remember God's word of promise. What he has done, is doing, and will do, even in these last days. God gave them over to their own desires. It is not that God has not made available to us or withholding from us that which is right for us or enables us to live godly, but that some, in fact, many choose to reject God and the ways of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Therefore, God gave them over to their own desires to do those things which are not meant to be done. The evidence is what we are witnessing all around us today, perilous living. It is perilous living because and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness as in Romans chapter 1. God created man mankind upright. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. This only have I found. God created mankind upright, but they have gone in search of many schemes. For God so loved the world. But I come to declare to you the good news. For the God of love still has his arms wide open for anyone who returns. His heart yearns for their return, that he might cleanse them and restore them. For his will is not that they should perish, but rather be saved. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Destroy the works of the devil. Yes, perilous times are here, but God still reigns, and he has the final say. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Sin issue has been dealt with. Hallelujah. Jesus was sent from the Father as the answer to the devil's work, revealed to destroy the works of the devil, operating through perilous men. Therefore, the sin issue has been dealt with. Hallelujah. God has not only done this, but he has also poured out his spirit generously and made available to anyone who is willing and obedient to experience and operate in his power to live godly. Choose life. So I present to you that which I also received, just as Moses challenged the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Choose wisely. Brethren, God is presenting to each of us the power of choice, life in the Holy Spirit, or perilous living. But we must be careful how we choose. May I exhort you, choose wisely. No return to the old way of life, nor to the world. There is nothing profitable in it. No more living outside the Holy Spirit, appearing godly, but ants. Declaration. Finally, Joshua 24 verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served 
that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua boldly declares, period, <clears throat> no ifs. If this our declaration is powerful, is it today your declaration, life in the Holy Spirit, or is it perilous living? Choose. Amen. There are additional readings about the last days in Luke chapter 21, verses 7 to 36, with key verses, verses 25 to 28, and verses 34 to 36. We're going to prayer now, as you pray with me. Father God, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. The entrance of your word brings light. It brings understanding to the simple, and we thank you. Indeed, we live in the last days and in perilous times with perilous men all around us as evidence in daily happenings. But we take comfort in your word of promise because in this same time, you are pouring out your spirit generously on anyone who is willing to be obedient. More than that, cause us to continue in the things we have learned and been assured of so we do not slip back into our old way of life. We want to please you, O Lord, Savior and God in every way. So help us to be willing and obedient that glory may come to your name. Point warring angels to frustrate, expose, oppose, and overthrow the ways of perilous men, evil men, imposters, offering them a, a chance for repentance, redemption, and salvation because of your love and mercy. Help us not to live a self-centered life, but a Christ-centered one in the power of your Holy Spirit, knowing the price you paid for us and that there is a great gain in such a life. God, you reign. We worship you, we honor you, and we adore you. Praise your holy name and give you thanks for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. The danger of going to hell. Matthew 24, verses 49 to 50. O oh Lord, give us a deeper conviction of the reality of the unsaved going to hell and the urgency to share the gospel with them even in the last days. We pray for every unsaved member of our family, spouses, and children. Bring them to salvation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cause the heart of those we speak to about Christ to be responsive, open, and to have the respect for the word of God. We pray for the salvation of those we meet who are captive to sin. Help us to lead them to Jesus Christ. Pray without season. Cause all the prayer warriors of Elim's national approved ministry to cultivate the attitude of God's consciousness and a God surrendered lifestyle. We pray without ceasing. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will mobilize the hearts of all approved in the Elim movement to respond to the call to prayer. Lord, we pray that you will bring revival to Elim's national approved ministries. Lord, we pray for your protection over the prayer warriors of Elim's national approved ministries. Overcoming excuses, Luke chapter 14, verse 18. Forgive us, O Lord, when we put other interests as a 
higher priority than responding to your call over our lives as approved. Lord, help us to love you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and to have no other gods beside you. May our worldly possessions take second place to our spiritual treasures. Forgive us, O Lord, for using our secular jobs as an excuse for not effectively discharging our responsibilities as approved in our local churches in these last days. Overcoming the wiles of the enemy, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 11. Give us a spiritual wisdom not to be ignorant of the plans, schemes, and devices of the enemy, we pray. Give us the wisdom to ensure we are always fully equipped with the full armor of God, not leaving ourselves exposed to the enemy's attacks. Give us full understanding of our authority in Christ so that we may use it fully and effectively in every dealing we have with our spiritual enemy. Give us the wisdom and discernment to be able to distinguish whenever the enemy is at work so that we can respond appropriately. Growing without limits, Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33. Lord, help each one of us to see the spiritual potential within us that is capable by your grace of growing without limits so that we achieve great things for you, we pray, even in these last days. We pray for all our local churches that you will bring about true spiritual growth, which each of us approved. We pray for numerical growth within our local churches of those who have responded to the gospel message. Teach us to dream big, godly dreams for you, Lord, and cause them to come to pass, for with you all things are possible. Manifesting the power of God, Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Help us to be the salt and light you desire us to be so that we can affect our generation for you, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us out of the kingdom of darkness. Help us to boldly stand as citizens of the kingdom of light in these last days. Keep us, O oh God, from being carnal Christians who profess Christ, but whose lifestyle still reflects the ways of the world. We pray for every woman and every man within the healing movement who is still in bondage to sin, carnally, or word carnality or worldliness, cause them to break free and to be on fire for Jesus Christ. Manifesting the power of God, Acts chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. Pour out your spirit upon us, O God baptism in the Holy Spirit and cause us to flow in the anointing by performing miraculous signs and wonders that will bring the unsaved to your saving grace. We pray for greater manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not just within the confines of meeting in the church building, but outside also. May the gift of faith, miracles, and healings be multiplied among us, we pray. We pray for boldness to demonstrate the power of God wherever we find ourselves, using every opportunity to reach the unsaved. Shining for Jesus, Luke chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. Give us the boldness, O Lord, to allow the light of Christ to shine brightly from within us, no matter where we find ourselves, as approved. May the character of Christ within us be evident by the way we speak, act, and conduct ourselves, O Lord. Let our words always be in accord with the way you would have us speak, O Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to cooperate with you so we can develop the fruit of the Spirit within us and so that our character can reflect the character of Jesus Christ. 
all in one accord. Acts chapter 4 verse 32. Lord, we pray for all approved that you help us live and work together in unity. Help us to appreciate and recognize the gifts and talents of others within our local churches and give them the support and encourage them to further develop them for the Lord. Help each of us to realize we are living stones in the temple of the Lord, which is incomplete without our own unique contributions. We pray for unity in prayer as we look forward to great and mighty things that you shall be doing within the approved in healing. Practicing what we preach, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. O oh Lord, we pray for your help that each of us will practice what we preach and bring honor to the name of the Lord through our Christ-like character. Lord, help us to maintain a good testimony before unbelievers in our places of work. Lord, help us to maintain a good testimony towards each other as the family of Finally, Lord, we pray for your grace to be a living epistle in our church, families, and our community in these last days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We give you glory and we give you praise that you have heard our prayer. And thank you, dear friend, for praying with us. And God bless you and have a wonderful day. Even as you share this prayer on the last days and this exhortation with others on your contact list. Be blessed.